hey everyone day three welcome to our small footprints you know daily food prep that we do every month when we do our monthly groceries today i made salsa so we i bought two cheap boxes of tomatoes and today i used one of those boxes so i've still got another box that i've got to do eventually um probably in the next few days otherwise the tomatoes will go off so there was salsa mixed with a couple of other things that needed to be done uh, I think I made pie filling today <laughs> so it'll all be in the video and the uh, and so it'll all be in the video and uh, the normal voiceover that I do and enjoy watching and I will see you again tomorrow please be sure to leave any feedback in the comments I love to read them see you later Lunch today involved quesadillas. Now, when we do something like the smoked pork, we try and use the meat for as long as possible before we have to freeze it, rather than double handling, like I've discussed before. So we use it in a myriad of ways. Over the first few days, with every meal, we tend to eat meat with every meal, which I'd like to curb a little bit, but at the moment, that's what we do. So we had quesadillas. Now I had made tortillas the day before and they were supposed to be for the quesadillas the next day, but the children had eaten them all as a meal the day before. So this is why I buy some store-bought ones. So we made quesadillas with the store-bought tortillas. We used some of our barbecue plum jam, as well as some of the onion jam, some homemade mayo, uh, some of the garlic conserver, nice and moist on the bottom of the quesadillas because nobody eats cheese but me so need lots of flavor and some uh, wet product on the quesadilla to make it stick together as it heats and we used the pulled pork these ones here are Daryl's so they have mushrooms and anchovies on them as well which no one else had on theirs that was not to anyone else's taste and we cook them in the cast iron pan and I just grill them on both sides until they're melty in the middle and crisp and crunchy and ready to be eaten and then I pull them out and I cut them into quarters and give them to the kids to devour. I really needed to start working through these tomatoes. I still have a box left. I only got through one box so that's going to be another task for another day. So I bought these with the intent to make salsa because we really enjoyed the salsa that I made last time. And they don't have to be superb tomatoes for salsa, which is great. So I just chop them up roughly. I just take the main core out. I don't peel. I don't pull the seeds out or anything else. I'm a very lazy salsa maker. So I just chop them up, take the main piece of core out that will not break down very well and any bad marks of any of the tomatoes that happen to be there sorting them as I go and just making sure that they all look pretty good and I use my Thermomix for uh, pureeing them I don't want to puree them making them into a really fine mince I suppose um, once I use the Thermomix to do that then I figured out after the first couple of goes that a full Thermomix of chunked up tomatoes ends up being around about five cups of the pureed tomatoes so I ended up measuring them out into my pot that way I added onions from the garden so these are the last of the onions that I've pulled up out of the garden which is why they're so small <laughs> and I did them in the thermomix as well I diced up garlic in the thermomix as well everything was used just nice and small chunks because that's how we like our salsa. I used a variety of chilies from the garden. We have a whole bunch of Aji pineapple chilies which are a really lovely fruity smell and flavor with heat. 
Uh, I'm My jalapenos haven't done real well this year, so I only have a few of those to add in there, but my shishitos are doing really well as well. So there's a whole bunch of shishitos, some argy pineapples, some jalapenos, and anything else that I could happen to find. I didn't have any sweet temptations that had gone red. I used them last time, and they probably added a bit more heat than this lot, so I might have to go looking for some of them in the freezer when I make the next box up. Uh, and it ends up being around about one and a half to two cups of the minced up peppers that I put in there to the tomatoes were 20 cups of the minced tomatoes to about one and a half cups of the peppers. Apollo helped me fill all the jars. He is very well dressed today, <laughs> but I don't really worry about it we homeschool there's no need unless they're leaving the house to be in appropriate clothing so this is what he was choosing to wear today and he helped me fill all the jars so I had him using a slotted spoon to pull out the tomatoes from the pot because I don't like to cook it down for too long because I find that it alters the freshness of the flavor of the salsa so what we do is we just use a slotted spoon to fill all the jars and then in the end when there's a whole lot of liquid left behind I can that up as well and I'll use that in some sort of a Mexican dish like a taco meat or something like that that has that Mexican type flavor to it uh, that in a dish it even works in bolognese to be honest it just adds a little bit of heat and in the size bolognese I make a, a jar or two of that as tomato product isn't going to alter the flavor too much so he helped me jar all them up and I helped position jars and I cleaned rooms and put lids on as I was going. I used a bunch of the jam jars from Aldi for this one as well as some of my Fowler's Vicola jars for this. I don't have many jars in the smaller size and something I need to grab. I have realized this year that I that I can a lot more in the 400-500 mil line than I realized. So I probably need to grab myself some more of those jars. I pulled all the leaks out of my garden the other day. The bed that they were in, the irrigation wasn't working correctly, and so all my leaks are very narrow. Uh, they weren't doing real well. Though when I pulled them up, they had some really good root growth, so maybe I could have left them in there longer and we would have gotten them a little bit thicker but regardless I pulled them up so that I could use that bed I planted more of the Jerusalem artichokes in that bed that I had pulled out of the previous one so we pulled all the leaks out and cleaned them all up to use for dinner tonight so I just cut the root ends off and took the first two or three layers of dark green leaves off the outside cut them up as far as I could where it wouldn't be too tough and used the whole as much of it as possible diced it up nice and fine and started cooking it off in the pan so I also used some of the garlic so we're still working through all the garlic that I had bought we still have a big bowl of that so I'm trying to make sure that I'm doing recipes that use that garlic so that I can use it up while I'm going so I used a whole bunch of garlic in there and then I used some of the chicken thighs. I still have a whole lot of these chicken thighs to piece and I think I've figured out the best way to do it, the quickest way to do it. There's a fair bit of meat left behind on that. I, I assume it's a backbone of some sort that's on the side there, a rib bone of some sort. And the there is a fair bit of meat left behind, but I use all these bones for stock. So they're going straight in the freezer to be used for stock and dog food and things like that. So I'm not overly concerned about the, the meat that's left behind because I'm not wasting them. They are going to be used in another manner, but cutting that bone off and then just cutting the thigh bone out like I normally would seems to be the quickest way to get through it. And with 36 kilos of thighs to work through eventually, getting it down to a quicker period of time is important. So I'm not going to worry too much about the fact that there's a little bit of meat left behind on those bones. So I add a hot bunch of ghee to the pan and then the leeks and I caramelize them off for a little while. I didn't want to burn them but because I was using a lot of the green part as well I did want them to soften up quite nicely. I added to the pan some bacon and it's just economy bacon and I've just sliced it up into chunks and put it in the pan and cooked it off a little bit as well we want it to let out some of its fat for the chicken so I diced up all that chicken that I deboned 
uh, so it's all the chicken thighs and I just threw that in as well after the bacon and again I just wanted to cook it off so that it creates a seal on it and that bacon fat's going to get in there as well then I decided to add some corn so I added two tins of corn I drained them and added the two tins of corn to the rest of the mix we like corn in just about everything which is why I always buy a slab of corn kernels each for each month because we the kids will eat it as a snack straight out of a can I prefer not them not to do that but they will and we use it in quiches and frittatas and in soups and all sorts of things it'd be something that I'd really like to try and grow maybe this year I'll put aside a bit of a plot and do a big square of it and see if we can get some corn growing but I think the birds would really like it as well so we'll see I added some a couple of tablespoons of corn flour to some a jar of chicken stock that I pulled off the shelf and I added that to all of this mix and then basically just stirred it while it simmered and thickened up we want it to the corn flour to create a little bit of a roux out of it and I, I could have created a roux at the beginning instead of adding the corn flour I could have added some flour to that butter and started the white sauce that way but I wasn't sure what I was putting in it at the time so I didn't know the quantities so I found this was an easier way for this particular one I added a bit of coconut cream just to make it a little bit more rich and stirred that through and then just kept on agitating it until so it didn't burn on the bottom until it looked nice and thick this has to go in the fridge overnight to be used tomorrow because if you put hot filling into pastry then your pastry will go soggy so you need to have cold filling in pastry before it hits the oven so that the pastry has an opportunity to cook before it gets soggy for dinner we had stir fry noodles now I'm just showing you ours here and I get questions all the time about why we eat differently to the kids and generally speaking we don't the kids had noodles as well it's just that by dinner time I tend to throw their food into a pot and then onto a bowl on the table for them to serve themselves from uh, in a hurry because they're children and it's dinner time so I don't generally film their meals because it's just a mess of children and hands and speed whereas I can spend a little bit more time showing you what we did with ours so it is stir fry noodles it is some of the pulled pork uh, stir fry it's some veggies there's some the leaves from some cauliflower and some broccoli and bits and pieces of vegetables and I just use a mix of oyster sauce and sweet soy sauce on top and it's just a really easy quick but tasty meal and that was dinner and I thought I'd show you the jars of salsa after they had come out of the canner. Someone has decided to draw patterns on the lids in the residue from the water, but just ignore that. So that was another day of food prep. I hope it gave you some ideas of what to use things for and how to get through another period of time with tasty food, but with only what you've got in the cupboard. And I will see you again next time. Thank you very much for watching.